And other questions. You guys are really good. I really appreciate when you guys ask questions in the middle because it like kind of keeps things top of mind. But what other questions might you guys have? Yes, sir. Um, to the extent that, so the question is, are photo releases necessary? To the extent that you always have one get out of jail free card, which is, which is the um, uh, DMC, what in the world? I can't think of the acronym now. Someone comes to you and says, you took a picture of me on the street and you didn't ask my permission, take that down. Well, number one, if you want to claim that you're a bona fide news source, if you've got a blog, it doesn't have to be professional, but if you've got a blog that is clearly talking about current events and kind of journalistic in nature, a court's going to back you up. The, the question is, do you want to go to court over it? Um, typically, the easiest thing to do is that someone comes at you and has that complaint, you just simply take it down and you're free clear. I mean, you get safe harbor. So anytime somebody complains about anything on your site, if you respond Im initially and do what they ask you to do, they can't take any action against you. The question on that stuff is whether or not, I mean, if you go and take a picture of somebody and use it for promotional purposes, it shows up on your bottle of vitamin water, you're in trouble. I mean, that's clearly for commercial purposes and you owe them a model release fee. Um, but if it's something that is, you know, somebody who happens to be in the background and it's like a news story or something, they're typically fairly safe like that. But you always pay Leanne if you get her in one of your pictures. Also, yes, sir. Okay. Also, it gets even crazier because if you have like Cowboy Stadium in the background. Yeah, the logos. You're, you're, yeah, you're going to find Jerry Jones is coming at you saying, where's my money because you used an image of a building. And that is the best promotion you can get for your blog ever. <laughs> so go for it. Uh, yeah, it, so you can as, as long as you have the wherewithal to manage them all, yeah. I've got one client that is a, a security firm that's based out of Louisiana, but they have 24 separate companies. They own all these different companies that appear to be mom and pops, but it's all one big company. So they have actually 24 different brands, and they have 24 Twitter accounts, video. I mean, and we replicate a lot of the stuff we do, but, yeah, we have just a monstrous amount of accounts we have to manage for them. Mm -hmm. You're saying they have to be set up as anybody can view them because otherwise nobody can take the link and plug it in. Oh, no, no. It, it doesn't have to be set up so they can view them. You, you, can, you can keep it unpublished right. so that no one can see it. Now, when they go to the URL, they will see that they'll get a message that says this page is not published. Well, I guess the thing I was questioning is that I took my URL the other day. I went uh -huh. on my, my own page, copied it, went out to Google, plug, plugged it in, hit it, and it just took me to the Facebook login page. Yeah. And, 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 and that, that, is, that may have been because you, you had done it in a browser where you were not cookied and logged into Facebook. So, so if you weren't logged in at the time, then Google didn't have access. Or Google went in to crawl that and somewhere got that information about your page. But when the Google bot went over to crawl your business page, it couldn't get into a publicly accessible thing. So what Google actually saw was the Facebook homepage. So even if you're logged in, Google may have crawled what it thought was your URL, but Facebook fed it HTML that was the HTML of the homepage. Uh, you go and you make sure that your, your page is set to public. So make sure that all the information, yeah. So what you, whenever you look at the content, when you're looking at the permissions on your page, you can select everybody or the whole world. You can select friends of friends, friends, friends with blonde hair, people I didn't like. I mean, there's like all these different people you can select. Just pick the one that is the most wide open. Because, I mean, in, 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 if it's your personal profile, then there's a reason to kind of lock stuff down. But if it's your business, the reason why you're there is to promote yourself. Open that stuff up. Open it up wide. Yeah, that must be, I must have clicked the wrong button. Okay. Hmm. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm aware of, but you can certainly go and leave your page public, and when people like it, you can remove them. I mean, that's a colossal pain in the rear end. Uh, but you can certainly go in and, and um, remove people as fans of the page, per se. You can, but then nobody can see your content. There's no point in having it up there. 
It's kind of like, is there a way I can lock the front door of my store so no one can come in and steal? Yeah, but they can't buy either. You know, so that, that, that would be the impact. That you, if you're going to create a fan page, uh, the thing you'd want to do is to kind of manage. Let me go and look at that right now. That's an interesting problem. Why on earth would you not want someone to like you? I know y'all do. Yeah, I, it's the I know it's the SEC. It's not you. Let's go to Geoport. Um, that is an interesting question. Yeah. Well, and typically what, 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 what companies in healthcare and in legal, and I don't know about financial services, but what they do in those situations, they have disclaimer colon and a link in their bio that points them to where they can read it. And that, at least, at least the Texas bar allows attorneys to do that because they understand the limitations of the platform. How does somebody not like you? That like requires a Red Bull and some thought. What other questions do we have? Nope, you're toast. <laughs> nope. Have you, Leanne, have you, like, submitted anything to them telling them what your situation is? You know, I mean, because that's the problem also is because since you have duplicates, they may just delete four of them and leave the, you know, and, and the thing is, is they'll just leave one of the random ones up. Yeah. Um, I mean, all you can do on that is uh, you can convert them to fan pages, but you still can't merge them. But I can only convert them to four independent Yes. And so all you can do is, you know, I, I had a, a midlife crisis where I deleted a bunch of my social accounts and, and I just change out, I delete all the content and I change out the logo that says this account is deactivated and there's only one post on all those accounts that says I've moved this, this, this page over to this, click here and follow me there. It's about all you can do. And you're going to lose 70% of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but, I mean, it's kind of like you're feeding the monster because I know you've been maintaining those for so long. But... You're like a junkie. Can you change, like, if my Google Plus has one Google Gmail address and my blog has another Gmail address, can I change my Google Plus address to be my Gmail, my blog address? Is it on Blogger or something? It's on Blogger. I don't think you can. I think you're out of luck. Now, what you can do is you can go and take, you can export all the content from that old Blogger account and launch a new one and import it in there and recreate your blog. So you can do that. You you will, but I mean, at some point, you just got to rip the bandaid off. I mean, I think it's better for you to, to figure out which brand you want and make it make it consistent across everywhere. Then then get rid of the Google Plus account and move it. Okay. Yeah, you have to look at everything you've got going on. You have to send me an email and I can help you. You raised your hand like eight minutes ago and I ignored you. Did you forget now? No, I mean, I think And if you're doing it a lot, like at a nightclub or something, typically you can have notices outside that basically say, by entering, you're giving us permission. You know, and like notifying people. Um, and then I do always have like generic model releases with me whenever I'm shooting stuff on the street. And I have never had anybody come to me and say, take something down. It's more likely that you'll be on site doing a shoot and someone will walk up and say, quit taking pictures of us or what are you taking pictures for? If they inquire at all, you get them to sign a release form. Whether, whether they're happy and thrilled or not, hey, can you go ahead and sign this room? Because if they're inquiring, 
then you don't want to hear from them six months later when you know something's happened and you thought you that it wasn't an issue and it was too late then but if someone doesn't hit you up when you're out shooting they're rarely if ever going to find you after you've posted it on the web and if they do just take it down yes ma'am Mm -hmm. um, how do you solve that? I, I mean, the challenge is, and here's going to be your fastest, fastest path. Um, go to Google and search for a page that goes along the lines of Facebook employees on Twitter. And then go and find those accounts and start sending them tweets. That is the fastest way you're going to do it. Because Facebook doesn't have a phone number to call. And, and support goes in. I mean, you're not going to get a response from a support email. Um, I have had people respond to me from all kinds of companies. And if you have a friend, find the person that's got the most followers possible to start tweeting them. Because the more followers, the more likely to respond because it's a PR play at that point. Um, but, you, yeah, you, you will find several pages on on the internet that have like Googlers on Twitter, YouTubers on Twitter, Facebookers on Twitter, um, and just start going down the list. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's kind of harassment, but it works. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. So everything you talked about is getting individuals to link up with you as a business. Do you ever do anything, or can you, and would you do the opposite, say, as your business like or subscribe to a professional organization or partner agency? Absolutely, and when we do the class on creating that following and building that audience, we'll get deep into that stuff. So you absolutely find companies that complement what you do. Um, there are even situations where, um, you know, T Tom is, is pulling together a group right now of essentially other um, design interactive firms that are essentially his competitors in order to pool resources to go after the state because the state has changed its law and the way it's collecting sales tax. And all of a sudden, after years of never collecting sales tax on design work, they're coming after firms like Level 10 and, and medium-sized firms. So that's a great example of Tom saying, you know what, these guys are my competitors, but this is, you know, it's like a tax version of Got Milk. We're all going to band together for the, for the common good, so absolutely, and we'll have a class where we talk about not only are you gain, you know, growing fans individually, but how do you go and you know, promote local events and get involved in groups and, and associations and stuff like that in order to grow. And, and it's not only a case of growing a fan base, but it's establishing authority for your business in the, inside the space that you're in. So absolutely, we'll, we'll do that. But it's going to be 2013 before we get to it because we've already got the classes worked out through December at this point. Yeah, just wait here. Just, just sit right here and we'll, I'll get to you. <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. Um, uh, at work, you know, I went through, I just found out about Google Places, and I went through, I went to our company name, mm -hmm. and I told her, but I did it while I logged in as my personal Gmail account, and now they're wanting to use it. I can't find a way to delete it. Yeah, and see, and, and that's, that's like a bear trap with a lot of these things, is that people like innocently go in and start doing this stuff because you like want to help your company, and then you're locked into that email account, and you're kind, of, you're kind of done. Now, in every situation, you can make a request. I mean, the unfortunate thing is that, I mean, Tom's got that situation with a couple of branded platforms out there for Level 10 that employees did something three years ago, and we don't remember who it was, and it's just like floating out there, and we can't get access to it. And right now... You know, there's this cartoon I saw where there's these two pigs sitting in a pen, right? And the one pig, they're both super happy, and they've got all the great stuff, and they're talking about how awesome the mud is, and look at the view, and they're talking about how awesome all the food is and everything. And, and they're kind of wondering why all this stuff is so amazing and it's free, and then you kind of back up, and there's like this, it's, a, it's like a, a bacon farm. And the caption on the final thing is, if it's free, you're not the customer, you're the product. And that's our situation with us. Facebook doesn't care if we're happy as individuals. Google doesn't care because we're not paying them anything. And so whenever we have issues that are bona fide issues, like I've got this email stuck here, I need it fixed. Since we're not putting money in the bank, they're not listening to us. And, and you're kind of dead in the water. I mean, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing is, I mean, if, if you, and it's funny because uh, back in the day, I used to work at a firm where we did tons and tons, like, like hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in, in pay-per-click advertising with Google. 
And when you're doing that kind of volume with them, oh, I mean, if you didn't like the color of green in the logo, they'd change it for you if you're spending enough money, right? I mean, they'll get to you, but we're average Joes, and no, they don't care about us, and there's no, they, they, there's no support desk that we're paying for, so there's no one to go to. Um, so you're, you're kind of just stuck with. In, in, in most situations, if you've created an account that, that the company can't go back and redo, it's, it's almost you know, kind of better to go through like a three-month transition where you kind of move off that email and you start sending your autoresponders out. So that when someone emails that account, you say, hey, this isn't my account anymore. Here's my new email account. And kind of wean yourself off of it and kind of leave it in the hands of the company. It's about all you can do, which is terrible and not the answer you want, but it's just kind of the state of affairs. Yeah. Don't do that. Oop, too late. <laughs> so, and, and, and as an agency or as a contractor, whenever I go into to, uh, to new projects, I'll either have a company create social at companyname.com, and that's what we use for everything, or you know, whenever we're going and creating things on Google and all these other accounts, I always go and create separate email accounts, and I create a spreadsheet with passwords in it. And the second those accounts are created, I distribute them to the client, so the client has access to all these emails, and they're only used for branded social media accounts. So that's one thing you may want to go back. And, and, and if you only created that today, you can't, what you can do is you can go to Google Places and close the business, and it'll take about three months for it to fall off the search. But you can close the business and then create an email account that you only use for marketing. And, re, and you can go ahead and reopen the other one tomorrow. But there'll be two of them showing up there for a while until Google finally gets rid of that closed one. You have to send them an email. Make it really easy. You have to send them an email. They make it super easy. Do a search on Google for closing a business in Google Places. And there are people that explain what there's no button to click on to say this. Because Google necessarily wants to make it hard because they don't want your competitor to go in there and shutting down your business on Google Places and call it. I mean, they, they by design, make it difficult to, to shut one down. Because what will happen is you'll make the request to them, and then they'll go and look for other people saying that it's closed. So you'll have to make the request, and then you'll have to wait for like a week and get your wife to go and say it's closed, wait for like a week, get someone else at the office to say it's closed. And once they get like five people that say, hey, Google, this place is closed, then they'll go and try to verify it somehow by calling you. And when they call you, Make sure that everyone knows to say this is what we're doing so they understand what the situation is. It's the only way on, on a places account or a local account that you can get their attention. So search for it on Google. Someone will give you the steps. It's all convoluted and ridiculous. But in that situation, I understand why they do it. Because if, if, if someone wanted to wreck havoc on, havoc on their competitor, shut them down in Google and they're toast. So I can understand why Google makes that hard. So anyone else? Yes, sir? Cool. Thank y'all very much. Appreciate it.